Hey dudes, today I want to talk about volume automation. This is simply going to be, if a clip gets a little quiet, we're going to increase the volume, gets a little loud, we're going to decrease the volume. So let's check out the clip and see what we're working with. Let's say that you have a recording that might be slightly under recorded and also performed at a low volume. And then suddenly the record volume goes up and the performance starts getting a little bit louder. And we got to find a way to balance these two volumes. Okay, we have our assignment. So let's move on to method number one. All right, so all we're going to do is go to the bottom left of the track that we want to control and show our automation lanes. So when I click it open, you'll see that this says volume. And here is the volume automation line. If you don't see volume and you see pan or something else, just make sure you click on volume. And you can also click on the ruler and you can change your view to let's say large or something like that. So you can see a little bit more what's going on. Okay, so now all we're gonna do for this method is individually add keyframes. In order to do this, I'm gonna hold command and you'll see my little thingy pops up with a plus sign. I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna left click. There we go, we added two keyframes. Now, you'll notice that I sort of set a keyframe in and a keyframe out, meaning I'm gonna be working in this region. When you're first getting started, I recommend doing this because you might accidentally do something like that where you adjust the volume across the whole track and the whole session, which of course is not a good thing. So let's undo that and you'll see that like now if I make a, a big mistake like that there, my in and my out safety keyframes will always have my back. Okay, so I'm going to hold command and I'm going to click. And I'm going to add another keyframe there and there because that is the range where I want to increase volume. And I will add a keyframe about here and here, because that's where I want to decrease the volume. Great. So now I just need to click and drag up to a desired value. So let's say a 6 dB increase. So let's now move this down to, let's say, 4.5. And you'll notice that I'm having trouble hitting that exact number. So a quick tip is while I'm clicking and dragging, if I hold command, it allows me to hit much more specific values. So there's my 4.5. Again, I click and I'll show you if I'm moving up and down without holding command, that's what it looks like. And with command, you see how much more sensitive that is. Perfecto. Okay, so let's check our work. Let's say that you have a recording that might be slightly under recorded and also performed at a low volume. And then suddenly the record volume goes up and the performance starts getting a little bit louder. And we got to find a way to balance these two volumes. Great, super successful. You could probably hear with your ears that this is much more even. And I had a meter over here running in the corner that was proving to us that we decreased the dynamic range, AKA made the volume more even. So we're good to go on method number one. All right, great. So method number two is not going to be drawing individual keyframes with the command and click method. We're gonna actually use a fader inside of Pro Tools and click and drag that fader up and down when we need to. In order to get the track set up to do this, we have to go up to our dialog one and this mode right here where it says read, you'll see that this is our automation mode selector. So if I click on that and go to touch mode, what this is going to do is anytime I am clicking and touching anything in Pro Tools, it's gonna memorize the move that I make either up and down. And then when I let go, it's gonna go back to its resting place and forever remember all of those automation dots the last thing we need to do in order to set this up is go to the output of the track 
and click on this little button that is called the output window button. And there we go. There's our fader. It popped up right there. And just to prove that this is working, if I draw some automation dots, you'll see that it decreases at that point and goes back up to here. So it is literally doing the exact same thing that we were doing before, except this time I can actually control it by clicking on my mouse and I'm gonna drag the fader up and down and I can have a little bit more precise control with this. And if you get used to it this way, you can also prepare yourself for working at a larger board. So let's jump into it. I'm going to just back myself up a little bit, let's say to about there. And it's very important that I hit play first, then I click and drag up, for example, when it's quiet, and then down. So here we go. Play, click. Let's say that you have a recording that might be slightly under recorded and also performed at a low volume. And then suddenly the record volume goes up and the performance starts getting a little bit louder. And we got to find a way to balance these two volumes. Then when I let go, you see that it goes back to its resting place. I hit stop. And there you go. The computer automatically drew all of those dots. The cool part about this is I was able to control things in real time like an instrument, moving up and down and going with the flow, which is awesome because sometimes you don't want just even volume up and even volume down. You need to change one line or one big peak or something like that. So that's method number two. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Keep in mind that both of these methods do exactly the same thing. They create keyframe automation for increasing and decreasing the volume of your track. That's it. I would recommend that you try to get familiar with both methods. You can move sometimes quickly and cleanly if you're just drawing individual automation dots, which is nice. But if you put it into a touch automation mode and you click that fader and you bring it up and down, you will in fact prepare yourself for a larger board and you can just ride the wave a little bit more and feel it out with your hands. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Until the next one. Later, dudes.